So I want to talk about a set of tools that I put online recently that should really help you with fretboard visualization. And what do I mean by that? I mean by when you look at the neck, when you look at a particular position on the neck, you view it holistically. You see all of the notes and you see the intervals in that position. Uh, it's very common when people first learn to play scales that they learn the scale as a, as a series of chains of positions or, or finger patterns. And that's actually one of the ways that I, I teach the three notes per string scale shapes is, is just by chaining a couple of very simple patterns together. And that's great to start with, but really what you want is to have, if you like, full random access, to have a full visualization of any position on the neck, not just, okay, I'm playing this pattern, so the pattern above is that one and the pattern below is that one. And the other uh, skill that is really useful to develop and that this will give you is to be able to see the, the notes in the scale as well. So you can see, okay, that's a root, that's a second, that's a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. But you can randomly jump to fifths and fourths and sixths anywhere in that position at ease, at, at will. And this, this exercise will give you that, that facility as well. And finally, uh, it certainly wasn't designed to do this, but what I've found over the years is by doing these kinds of exercises, you develop your ear as well. Not only can you find them on the neck, but you start to get used to the sound of a particular interval, a particular note function, and its number as well. So you know, and you can start to be able to sing and hear what a sixth sounds like and what a fifth sounds like and what a fourth sounds like. So that's, that's really useful and it's a happy uh, coincidence that you can develop that just by doing this exercise anyway. So I originally did this with a piece of paper and random numbers. That was, that was how I first started to develop this exercise and all I do is create a sheet of paper, write down random numbers from one to seven and use that as, as my reference guide. But what I thought would be fun is if I created a couple of training videos that basically give you that as well. So I've put two online on a separate channel. I've got a, a channel which I put metronomes and tools and things like that on. And I've put these two videos on there. And you'll, you can see that the first one is basically numbers that tick away once every two seconds for 20 minutes. Just the numbers one to seven. And then the second video is exactly the same, but I just let the numbers tick a little faster, so once a second. So as you get better, you can move from one to the other, depending on your, on your level of uh, skill at this. So uh, let's zoom in and I'll show you how to use them. Okay, so all we're gonna do to start with is we're just gonna work on a small part of the, of the uh, entire position that you may wanna work on. So for example, I'd start by just working on the bottom octave. So there's the first octave of the major scale. And I'd do three classes of this shape, one with the root falling on my index finger. And I'd get used to that. And then I'd do with the root falling on my second finger. And then with the root falling on my little finger. And if you know my deep dive series, you'd know that comes from the first fragment, that comes from the second fragment, and that comes from the third fragment. But anyway, all I'd do is I'd put that video on, and the numbers would be ticking away once every second or every two seconds. And all I'd do is see if I could keep up with it, just within the notes within that shape. So, let's say it's here, a one, a five, a four, six, two, three, seven, five, six, and just follow the video and see if you can keep up with it, see if you can make it nice and smooth, and see if you can just know where those, those uh, notes are in that scale. And then I'd, I'd change keys by moving across a set of strings. So I'd make the A string my root. Still the same shape, but this time just working across the A, D and G strings and do exactly the same thing and then I'd do between the D, G and B strings and then between the G, B and E strings. 
And then of course I move on to that second shape and work on those again with the video, just seeing if I can find each of the degrees of the major scale as they appear in the video. So once you start to get these little, little smaller parts of a position working, you can start to work on the full position. So let's say we'd start on the first position of the three notes per string major scale. And what I'd notice there is, okay, that scale starts with that first pattern that we've been working on. And then from this point, the second octave is that second pattern that we've been working on. So again, I just start working on those and see if I can join them together. And they, once you can get them working in nice, working as separate sections, I'd see if I could work on the boundaries. And the way to do that is, for example, I'd make that, if I see a one, I'd play that note. One, two, three, four. But if I play, see a seven, I'd play that seventh, that sixth, and that fifth. And so if I'd just see if I could work on that set of strings and just join, blend those two shapes together in my head. And then finally, you'll find that there's some overlap, uh, possibly on the top E or on the bottom E, which sit above the, the octaves that I've been working on. So in this case, that second pattern finished on the B string, but there's two, three, four above that. So again, I'd, I'd build a little group of notes based on that. So one, two, three, four, and seven, six, five. Let's say I just work on that set, set of notes with the video playing as well. And then finally, what's nice to do is to take that whole shape and just see if you can randomly access across both octaves. So it's quite nice to sort of say, first uh, number you see comes from the bottom octave, second number comes from the top octave. So see if we can just jump hop across quite large jumps across the neck, just see if you can do that. And again, you work on, on all seven positions going up, up the neck until you have that understanding of where all of the degrees of the major scale are and how they sit on each of these shapes. So as I say, by doing that, you should help with ear training. If you really want to push that side of it, what you can do is sing, try and sing the notes before you play them on the guitar. So uh, if that was my root note, one, six, five, three, four, seven. So as the notes tick by, see if you can sing it and then see if you can play it. But that's it, see how you get on with it. I'll, I'll put some more up there. I'll put some other, other scales like the minor shapes up there as well. And uh, maybe some of the modes as well. This is a good way of understanding and hearing modes. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll build out these, these other tools over the, over the coming weeks. Anyway, hopefully that was useful for you, and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.